Okay, this can be a generic introduction to the exercises. I realize if you're looking at this, you say, oh, this is 69, and you might be on a different one. And, you know, you could be on a different one. I'm not saying you're on this one here, but this is exercise 69. Now, certainly, there's going to be a variety of exercises to do. I certainly would start at exercise one, then do exercise two, so forth and so on. There's a common theme between the exercises, though. And the theme is this. This is from a textbook written by Webster Wells in 1904. This is common throughout the entire document. The name of the textbook was Advanced uh, Course in Algebra. Uh, now, someone says, why is it redacted? You know, it's that little black box over there. The reason it's redacted is I was asked to redact a word course from this because this document is being made available to the Prison Mathematics Project. And for some reason, course set off the censor, all right? Now, what I mean by the censor, this document has to get into a prison and the prison doesn't like the word course in the document, so I had to get rid of it, all right? But anyway, it's Webster Wells, 1904, Advanced Course in Algebra. It's an excellent textbook, all right, excellent textbook. The problem with the textbook, though, is um, it's typical of that era, um, you know, very short chapters, uh, a few examples, and then really difficult problem sets, all right? And the book, I don't know, maybe like 500 or some odd pages. If you look at my book, though, you know, right now it's at 2,500 pages. So what's different about my document? It's more of a modern, modern, uh, modern slant to it. What I do is I, you know, I type up solutions to it. And what else do I do to it? I post videos for it, yada, yada, yada. But I just want to talk about the generic nature of it, all right? So the generic nature of it is, um, and I'll read it to you. It goes on to say, although some problems are very challenging, you should be able to do most of the following exercises. Solutions and semi-detailed work appear after each problem as a way to validate your progress. Updates to this document will undoubtedly happen, and I encourage feedback related to improving this document to help me improve the content. I do want to improve the content, by the way. Work provided may not be complete, but it should be sufficient to understand to provide its solutions. Although I appreciate what Wells does in the text, I may be taking a different approach. And I really mean that. I may be taking a different approach to Wells. Using your head, by the way, is the probably the best option you have. Now, certainly I have a head. You have a head. Our heads may not agree about what the best options are. But I got to be honest with you. In mathematics, hopefully our plan will lead to the same conclusion. All right? So I'm going to go on to say over here, for every reason you need to show additional work, well, that's what these videos are about. All right? I'll be showing additional work. I will show it. I will show you additional work. It goes on to say, please contact me. All right? Well, I'm going to say videos for the most part. You don't need to contact me if you're watching the video. But if you do need to contact me, I'm going to give you my contact information. And my contact information, I'll write this down for you. My name is Ron. My last name is Bannon. Whoops. And my email address is B as in boy, the at symbol, N N O N dot US. Now herein lies the problem. If I am overwhelmed with emails, I can't answer everyone. All right. This document is growing though. And I'm hoping it's not growing so fast where I'm overwhelmed by people contacting me. But the bottom line is, if you put in the subject line, you know, Webster Wells, <coughs> there's a better chance I'll come across your document or on your email and be able to respond to you. Sometimes the response might be generic, but I want to be honest with you, I, I will do my best uh, to, to look at the, uh, um, uh, uh, what you're writing me. All right? Let me keep reading. All right? So... Again, I, I do provide work, but again, do look at my work. I don't like your work. I, I want to do something. And we're not going to stop you. You can do the work you like doing. All right? I, I do want to point out you're not alone if you can't follow my work. Right? I can't follow my work sometimes either, by the way. But I go back years later and look at my work and say, what was I doing there? That happens. All right? That's the problem with looking at other people's work and being a teacher and grading work. It's hard to look at work. It really is. All right? Well, you know, what do some teachers do? They look for the conclusion of your work, the answers. All right? I am too. And you should be tuned if you're doing your work, looking for the answers, right? Answers are clearly stated if you look at my K. They're clearly stated, by the way. Every single problem, the answers are clearly stated, all right? At least I believe uh, most people would see them to be clearly stated. They understood algebra, by the way. 
It goes on to say that, yeah, you need a good grasp of algebra to solve these problems. But I got to be honest with you. The way that this course was being taught back in 1904 was it was a presentation by Wells, and that's what we're giving you over here. There were some examples presented by Wells, and that should be more than enough to move forward in the problem sets. More than enough. More than enough. I got to be honest with you. I have worked this entire book, and I was challenged by quite a few of his problems. The reason being is these things are written at a very high level for the most part, all right? Now, granted, you're going to see some problem sets that are super easy, other problem sets that are more difficult. That varies from student to student. But his course does start out easy, and then it starts moving to things that I think even a PhD student in mathematics would have trouble with. But the bottom line is this was a traditional algebra course that was once taught to students trying to enter into a STEM-related career. By the way, Wells was a professor at MIT. He had a bachelor's from MIT, and he became, I believe, a full professor at MIT. Now, this was in the era where getting a PhD in mathematics in the United States was quite rare. Um, it was certainly more common in Europe, but the bottom line, he was quite talented at teaching what I call those bridge courses into the STEM-related careers, all right? What are those bridge courses? You know, algebra, trigonometry, geometry, yada, yada, yada. He was quite good at it. So this is the general statement I say about the exercises. Now, again, the document's going to get updated. It'll get updated with videos, typically for problems. And again, you may not be at 69. Whatever number you're at, whether it's, you know, 69 or number one or 119, doesn't matter. I'm going to try over time to update the document with more and more support information. So again, at some point, you're going to see the document slightly change. You may not notice those changes, but if you're looking at the document, it will change over time. Let me repeat this. A lot of students want access to the document, but the only people that have access to this document now are the participants and mentors in the Prison Mathematics Project. But at some point in the future, I do plan to publish the document. I plan to post, publish both the PDF, right? So I, I plan to publish a PDF, a, a ton of videos, and I also plan to publish the LaTeX. Now someone says, why would someone want any of that stuff over there? Well, the PDF so you could read through the document and work the examples, exercises, read the lecture notes, yada, yada, yada. Why are videos helpful? Some students need to watch people do problems in order to understand them. It's not enough to have a written work down. Now, why the LaTeX? The LaTeX is for those teachers or students that want to reuse the document. All right. In other words, maybe they look at question number one and say, you know what? I would love to put that question in my exam, but I want to retype it. If I gave you the LaTeX, you could just simply you know, take the LaTeX. Other things within the document, though, within the LaTeX document, are going to be graphs that certainly Wells did not have at his disposal when he wrote the textbook. I am able to create graphs, though, that are quite accurate, that really give meaning to the solutions to these problems over here. Wells was not capable of doing that. All right? So, again, as the course proceeds, the structure is pretty much the same. What are you going to be given? Lecture material, worked examples, and then you're going to have an exercise set. My exercise set, would you look at it? I do put an answer key down there, and I will be publishing videos for those students that need access to someone at a blackboard or whiteboard doing those examples. Thank you so much for paying attention.